Hidden away in the Anatolian mountains of Turkey lies one of the most significant and unlikely gemstone deposits ever discovered. Excavated at a height of over 3,000 feet, this exceptional variety of diaspore pushes the limits of modern technology in order to extract this true miracle of nature from its home of over 100 million years. Steve Bennett, together with myself, fellow presenter Ray, and some of Gemporia's best customers have traveled to the only location in the world where this incredible discovery can be found. The Zarite Mine, operated by Millennium Mining Limited, is owned by Turkish-born entrepreneur Murat Akgun, who in 2005 was granted the very first license to mine for gemstones in Turkey. The first thing I noticed when arriving at the site was how professional and well-organized it was. Murat and his team have set up a fantastic operation here, which is both ethical and highly productive. The mine employs around 40 people that are all paid a higher than average salary with free health insurance. Accommodation is also provided on site for any miners recruited from other regions. Murat has recently invested in expensive, state-of-the-art equipment to improve productivity in the mine. From excavation to sorting, Steve remarked that it is some of the very best equipment he has ever seen. After a quick visit to Murat's secret stockroom to look at the most recent findings, we were all excited to make our way towards the mine area. First we visited the sorting area, where every piece of rock leaving the mine is checked before it is discarded. This is a vital stage of the process, as it's very important that not a single one of these precious gemstones goes to waste. At nearly every other mine, all gemstones are found at the sorting stage, but here is just an extra precaution, as most zarite is picked from the host rock inside the actual mine. They might find one now and again. But most of the gemstones here, you, you take it out to see. The mine itself is a short walk up an inclined path, snaking its way past a huge pile of rocks, which once rested inside the very mine we're about to enter. Murat and his mining team were ready to blast a hole into the rock in order to venture deeper into the mine. But knowing we were visiting, held off the explosion for a few days so we could witness it for ourselves. Well, this is what we call a face. And when the, we have a face, we drill holes and they fill with explosives and then they stuff it with these stuffers. It has water inside. So the power of explosion goes that way, you know. Uh, and uh, we have some rough pieces here inside their whole truck and uh, they try to pick these as soon as they see it and uh, uh, after they're finished we explode and then uh, wait until the dust is all you know settled, settled and then uh, they come and pick up the bauxite and take it down outside to the silos. So the dynamite sticks have just gone in and uh, these guys have been chipping away at the small gem seam that they found and this is the neck, they're going to blast in about a metre uh, so they can get rid of all this rough and sift through it for some uh, beautiful, beautiful zarite. Uh, but they, what they've been doing is been chipping away at some of the soft rock first and just to see whether there's any zarite present before they, uh, before they blast because of course once all this comes down it's going to be a whole heap of rubble here so they want to make sure they've got every little last bit out of the, the small little seams they can see now before they blast a metre back in. After a short walk to a safe distance, Steve is given the opportunity to detonate the explosives. Atish var atish! Top var top! Emotions, feelings? 
Uh, loved it. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I instantly well, that was some bang. The whole mine was shaking, the, the sound was really impressive, and yet the amount of explosives was quite small, just about 7 kg. And the reason why it made such a noise and, and, and it was so almost violent was simply inside the mine, everything's compressed, there's nowhere for the sound or uh, the air to travel. In direct contrast to the beautiful gem quality Zalrite, Muret's mine is also a primary source for bauxite, the principal ore used to produce aluminium. Bauxite itself is mined all over the world, which makes the unique discovery of Zalrite even more remarkable. The, the planet's 197 million square miles. You've got this bauxite vein that runs from here all the way to India, this, this vein, but it stops and starts where it's broken up over geological events. And it, the vein itself is in between 8 and... and Eight and twenty meters wide, I think. Where's, where's he got? Oh, he's gone. But so I think it's between eight and twenty meters wide. The vein, and then in the vein, this is the only place from here to India in the bauxite vein that this has ever crystallized. Just in this very small little area here. As the dust from the explosion starts to settle, the team travel back to the detonation area to see how much rock the blast has removed. So we've left it about twenty mi minutes post explosion. Uh, for the dust to settle down a little bit and we've come down to see the result. We haven't gone in the full one and a half metres that we'd hoped, we've gone in about what looks about 80 centimetres, maybe 90 centimetres. Uh, a few of the top ones haven't gone in as far, so now the actual job uh, before they can blast again tomorrow is to come in and remove all the loose bits that are overhead. Next, Muret takes us up several ladders to a higher level. This part of the mine is the current area being mined for Zarite, and we were all very excited to see what discoveries were to be unearthed. One hell of a commute to work. <laughs> so we've come, we've come up from the uh, bauxite scene, and now we've actually got to where uh, uh, Murat's kept for us for the last month this scene, so we can come and actually experience it coming out of the ground. It's hard to say at the moment what pieces are actually going to be able to be cut into gemstones, because it's uh, all still a bit damp and a bit muddy, but when we get out of the mine in a, in, a, in a short while, then we'll take it to the cleaning table and we'll get some water on it and we'll see if any of these can actually be cut into gemstones. But certainly, uh, oh, here we go. Right on cue. Perfect. earlier with Murat and he's got some amazing specimens um, and clearly what we're seeing here you can see the crystal structure you can see the way it's running so that's a clear indication that we are looking underneath all of this we are looking at a piece of zarite whether it's gemstone quality or not it's taking all of the earth and the mud that's around you can really see it on the back there's so moving some of that away you can really see the crystal structure and you can really start seeing I mean, look at that. You can really start to see that there could possibly be something here. Now, whether there will be or not is a different matter because obviously it's only going to be a 2% yield. Um, but we'll find out. We'll see as soon as we get some water on it, give it a clean, and um, we'll see later. Okay, so I'm mining a uh, seam here with uh, Faik, and uh, we've got. Um, a, a basically a little crack in the rock. Bauxite is a very uh, compressed mineral, but where it starts to fracture, these are all indicators where the rock starts breaking up, we start seeing the veins through all the rocks, and where it's big enough, um, the crystal is allowed to grow, and that's, and only there is where you're going to find uh, this incredible gemstone zarite, the Turkish diaspore. Uh, it's a, a seam that they've left for us to have a look at. This doesn't happen every single day, and we've been pulling out some uh, nice pieces. It's all a matter of finding which ones are good enough for jewellery. So Marat's kept the mine open for us and obviously we're not alone. Um, we've got four fantastic customers with us and Mick has been with one of the rods just prodding at the seam here that Marat has kept for us the last few months. When you look at it, it just looks like rusty dirt. You just don't, you don't think for a second that there's a possibility that this could be in your piece of 18 karat jewellery so it's quite fascinating and obviously with only a 2% yield I'm going to say accent gemstones.
it is fascinating. It's fascinating. If we'll get a large piece out of this, I don't know. But if we have a look at the bucket, I shine my torch and I'll add this little bit to it. You can see larger pieces have really already been taken. That's it so far. This is the uh, fourth time I've been into the Sarat mine with Morat, and uh, the first three times we poured a lot of uh, rough crystals out of the ground, but uh, were disappointed that we never found a single piece while we were in the mine. I think today I'm going to break my run of bad luck because this certainly looks to me as if it's got the clarity good enough to be cut uh, into a gemstone. But we have to wait to see because Murat is a complete perfectionist. If there's a single inclusion in there, once we get outside and have a look, it's a no-no. He's absolutely fanatical about making sure that every single piece that carries the Sarite name has perfect clarity. So it still is yet remains to be seen whether this is going to make it into jewellery, but whether it does or not for me, that's as close to perfection as Mother Nature can give us. So if we were mining at speed, uh, we, the mine could be mined out within three to five years, but we're taking our time, is that right? Yeah, definitely right. I mean, uh, the way we're mining right now is we're really taking care of this uh, Zarite before we get out. You know, we have to make sure that they're not damaged by explosives. So until we see the last piece come out, we don't use explosives. And when we have to, we have to, because this bauxite is very difficult yeah, to, yeah. to break. And uh, yes, it can, you can mine everything up in two, uh, three to five years if you try really hard. Okay, but uh, take it nice and slowly and protect definitely, the gemstone definitely. as you get it out. We, we want to make sure it's not damaged and yeah. we want to make sure it's not left, left out. Yeah. Thank you, Maura. As less and less zarite remains in the ground, the demand grows, driving up the price. In fact, once the mine is exhausted, who knows if we'll ever see another deposit again. Here, Steve explains how this miracle of nature first formed. Over 100 million years ago, the bauxite split here. Now, bauxite is rich in aluminium. Into the gap, of course, over time comes water and chemicals as it seeps down through the earth. And with the immense heat and the immense temperature down here, what has happened is it's picked up uh, trace elements of that aluminium and it started to crystallize uh, into crystals. And as we follow along here, this is a lot of mud today, quite a lot of a, a mud seam because uh, the mud's come down through the earth. And it's into the mud that where we're actually going to find hopefully one or two pieces uh, of, of sarite. So this is the seam that we're all working along right now. And uh, you, you will just see one or two. Can I have your, thank you very much. Uh, you will just see one or two. Mm, this one's a bit stiffer than we'd hope, but you'll just start to see, maybe you can see on that camera there. Use that hand, OK, thank you. Yeah, there we come. Hopefully, there we go. There we go. It's coming. There we go. Sorry about that. Bit longer than we expected, but there. Oh, that's nice. That's quite nice. What's nice about this piece is it's quite. The crystals are normally quite flat, very two-dimensional. That means that uh, we can only cut small stones off. But if this was, oh, it's not clean. Oh, it's a shame. Uh, it's not clean. If it had been clean, that would have been a perfect shape because it's quite big. But it's got quite a lot of inclusions, so uh, there is no way that Morat will let us actually uh, cut that gemstone. In the early days, they were quite happy for the early stones to have inclusions, but to protect the Sarite, the Sarite brand, uh, Morat has said that he doesn't want to have a single piece where you can see an inclusion uh, with the naked eye. After several hours mining with Murat and his team, we took a step back to reflect on not only how time-consuming it is to mine, but also the unusual nature of this particular type of host rock mining. I was just saying, how long does it take to blast through an area like yeah. this? And he was just like, well, we did this metre, and then we That's did yeah. this metre, and then... <laughs> yeah. And he, oh, it's absolutely yeah. fascinating. It really is. Yeah, host rock mining. And this is quite interesting because it is host rock, and it isn't if you think about it, because it kind of is host rock because you've got to go through all the host rock. 
Yeah. It's not physical. Well, actually, when you yeah. find it, it's, 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 it's actually not in that. Yeah. It kind of yeah. is in the host rock because it yeah. hasn't moved from where it grew, but it's not physically, it's not physically attached. In the That's host what rock. I was yeah. like, cause, like, yeah. Yeah, like yeah. appetite. Appetite, yeah. when you extract it, it's physically, physically attached, attached to the host right. rock, yeah. isn't it? The uh, kunzite uh, was physically attached. The tourmaline's always, when you're in um, sort of, well, they can't even say always, but in Brazil, Pedanera, Cruzeiro, they're, they're all physically attached. But then, I suppose, if you talk about tourmalines in places like uh, the Pariba mines in Mozambique, then that's completely alluvial. So the thing is with mining and gemstones, the more you learn, the more the more rules you think there are, they're actually <laughs> yeah. less yeah. than there's always an exception to everything. So this is host rock, but it's not physically attached to host rock, but it is where it grew in the first place. Yeah, yeah. So where you find it is exactly where it grew. So it's host or rock it mining. may have grown yeah, two or three feet up there and it slid down, mm -hmm. you know, with, mm -hmm. when, with, when the with the mud comes in. It's, yeah. it's been amazing, it has been amazing. It was now time to make our way back to the surface. However, there was one final treat for Ray and myself as we got to take a ride out on the Bobcat, which is a special vehicle used in many aspects of mining. We're on the Bobcat and we are making our way through to the exit of the mine. It's very exciting. This is Jane, this is one of our customers who has come to, uh, of course, the Zarite mine with us. And while we've been down in the mine, there were lots of ladders and some confined spaces, of which you're not a fan. No, I didn't want to do that, but, <laughs> so I did my own digging. I had seven wonderful gentlemen from this amazing mine, and I have my own bucket full of Zarite, which I'm delighted with. It's pretty impressive. It I'm not going to impressive. It's pretty impressive. I think impressive. it should be impressive, and who knows, maybe one of these will be my next ring. I hope so. Oh, fantastic. After a short ride back to the site, we sat down with Murat in his office to discuss the day's findings. Tell us where we've been today and how we got, which veins we were in and which, which, which pipes we were in. Right, this is the entrance and uh, this is where we went in. And basically we walked down to this level, below level. I believe it's 590 meters above sea level here. And we went to the face where you saw the drill holes already mm -hmm. filled in. Yeah. So we put the explosives in and then we walked out here probably and this, like I said the safest distance has to be 60 meters minimum. Yeah. Where Steve pushed the button <laughs> <laughs> for the big bang. And it was a big bang. It, yeah. was. Oh, it was amazing. After that we had to walk out and above to this level and then we took the ladders down, uh, up, I'm sorry. Basically we were in this red area uh, where the, this is the crystal zone which heavily needs attention. There are a lot of crystals as you saw, everywhere you look there are veins. So we will spend uh, probably six months there mm -hmm. before we start exploding again. Yeah. So you have essentially all this part here this is, um, still, not to, mine. still to mine. Yes, and well it, I was told by our geologist that it goes down 200 meters deep. So this was about 40 meters, 45 meters. So we have about another 100 meters good, at least. You know, you see how much work goes into it. You've got four great customers with us today who all, I think, had a great time and they were, yeah. they were, they were very brave getting up the ladder. <laughs> um, but, you know, they had a good dig, we had a good dig, the whole mining team had a good dig, and you come out with probably three or four pieces that Mr. Perfection over there will let us cut because he won't let anything go into a, a, a SAR right that's got any inclusions. So, uh, you know, that's, that's why it's so rare. Well, it's rare anyway because of one location. Yeah. But it is nuts to think that there's 197 square, 197 million, million. square yeah. miles and on, the planet. on the whole planet and this is just here. In one tiny little place, in one little sea. It is amazing. It's really the Turkish miracle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Moret's closing words really are the most fitting tribute to this incredible gemstone. Something so rare and so beautiful, and with such an unlikely story, really can only be described as a miracle. And for our customers to share this experience with us is truly magical. A first-hand look at the hard work and effort that goes into mining Zarite is a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Getting into the mine today was absolutely fantastic, mind-blowing, um, and climbing up the, the step ladders, three of which there were ladders up uh, to get to the face of where the mining was just wonderful. To do it yourself and hold it in your hand, well, there's no experience like it really. I've always appreciated uh, how much time it must, must take to actually mine the gemstones and to uh, cut them and facet them. Um, I, I just can't believe um, the price at which you're selling them. It's totally changed my perception on jewellery to actually go somewhere to see where it's found and the fact that it's all natural is really quite incredible. It changes your perception about jewellery totally when you actually see it taken out of the ground in a mine and you understand so much more about the hard work and the toil that these people go to for us to wear a lovely luxury piece of jewellery.